It can be truthfully said that I have a bat in my belfry. Oh, there's more than just bats up in this belfry, I can tell you that. <laughs> As far as comic book superhero movies of the 1980s go, this film was the definition of reimagined. And for most of us, it was our first taste of how Batman was meant to be. Dark, gothic, brooding, gritty, violent. Although the violence and action seen in this movie was tame by today's standards, it did set the tone for nearly all future incarnations of the Dark Knight. That dark, menacing, supernatural form, kind of like a bat who hunts criminals in the dead of night and beats their asses in the alleyways. I mean, this was the first comic book hero movie that said to Hollywood, hey, we can do this. We can go dark and dangerous. And it was the first comic book hero movie to show audiences that, yes, we can go dark and dangerous and make it look cool. In 1989, this was my second time seeing a Tim Burton film and my second time seeing a movie with Michael Keaton as the lead. The first film by Burton, starring Keaton, was, of course, Beetlejuice. It's showtime. And when you have a director and an actor who have done such great work together before in the past come together again in a film like Batman, you're just creating movie magic. And part of that magic was adding Jack Nicholson to the mix. And it's not like the plot needs to run down here, but here it goes anyway. Michael Keaton plays the role of Bruce Wayne, the funny, charming, charismatic billionaire who's a little socially awkward, but leads a double life as Gotham City's badass, fear-invoking, seemingly unstoppable Batman. Jack Nicholson plays nemesis to our hero as the gangster-turned-nutjob killer, the Joker, who devises a plan to control or kill all remaining crime families in Gotham and then plunge the city into chaos and ruin, just for fun. As the plot thickens, the two finally come head to head in an epic beatdown after Bruce learns that it was in fact the Joker who killed his parents back in his old gangster days. I made you. You made me first. Now that there was an awesome, mind-blowing plot twist, and one that hasn't been done again since in any Batman incarnation. This movie gets top marks all around. Tim Burton's neo-gothic look of Gotham City, as well as the all-black leather design of the Batsuit, adds to the tone of the story as well as to the character of the Batman. And all of the crazy, over-the-top, campy antics seen in this movie did well to reflect the off-the-wall yet deadly insanity of the Joker. Even Bob Kane himself, the creator of the Batman, was amazed at the scope and the realism of the uh, sets, the costumes, and the success of the movie as well as the reception of the audience. It was more than even he could have imagined. Out of all the Burton Batman sequels that followed, the original 1989 Batman still stands as the absolute best by fans and critics alike. So you'd think that the sequels would do a better job at trying to raise that bar higher. But nope. The 89 Batman did set the bar and paved the way for the future. Its legacy and gothic feel would be carried on in Batman the Animated Series of the 1990s, as well as future comic books, graphic novels, animated shows and movies, and of course, some very, very popular video games. And finally, if the stellar performances of these actors and the vision of the director wasn't enough to get you in the feel, then the epic score and soundtrack sure as hell was. Out of all the original Batman films, this here is my absolute favorite and gets a well-deserved Titan rating of 10 out of 10. So do you agree? Does the original 1989 Tim Burton Batman deserve a 10 out of 10 rating? And which Batman film is your personal favorite? And who do you think did a better job as director or actor? Share your thoughts in the comment box. And if you like this video, click the button. And if you want to see more videos, you can click on subscribe. I am the Titan 138. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.